Senator Markey, somehow you slip ahead of these folks. I'm, I'm not sure how you did that, but uh, you're next. No, thank you so much. Um, and again, you know, if the oil and gas and coal industry have a tax break for 100 years, all we're looking for is a little equal treatment, you know, so that we have the same kind of predictability for 100 years. Um, I think we'd feel really good about, you know, our future in renewable industry. And they call that for renewables socialism. If that's what you call it, then give us whatever the oil, gas, and coal industry had for 100 years in terms of their protections. And we'll be very happy with that in terms of the, the protections. So if we're going to break our dependence upon Putin's dirty energy oil, um, we, the, the oil companies have had years to live up to their promises of affordability and security, but they weren't just selling oil, they were selling snake oil to American consumers. Take their argument, for example, that lifting the export ban would help American energy independence. In 2014, the year before Congress lifted the ban on exports, 9 million barrels a day were imported from other countries. Today, believe it or not, the United States now exports 8 8.6 million barrels of oil a day. We export it out of our own country. 8.6 million barrels. That, that wasn't really what the promise was of the oil industry in 2015 when we lifted that ban. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, we, we can see increasingly that American consumers are exposed to the global price fluctuation caused by Putin and Chinese energy demands and other external forces. Uh, so, Secretary Mabus, uh, first I'd like to thank you for your great service to our country uh, as the U.S. remains attached to global oil markets and dependent on oil and natural gas as a result of big oil's business decisions. Do you agree that we are running a constant risk of, pay, uh, of playing into petrostates and undermining our security and that of our allies in addition to fueling instability from climate change? Absolutely, on both counts, Senator. The, the fact that we allow these uh, tyrants and dictators like Putin to basically hold our families and our economy hostage for their, for their bad acts and that we are not addressing climate change nearly as strongly as we should in order to prevent some of the really terrible things that uh, you're already beginning to see happen. And so I think both the things you said are absolutely true. No, thank you. And by the way, it's great to see my old friend Jim Matheson here. Um, just, um, just a great congressman, my great friend. So here's where we are. We have, uh, uh, we have right now um, 6,000 leases that, the, um, uh, that uh, have been bid for by the oil industry on onshore public lands. It's about two bucks a barrel. They are not drilling on those right now. There's 3,000 um, leases offshore at about two bucks an acre. They're not drilling on that as well. But let's just go even further. They have 6,000 leases that they're already drilling on that they've just stopped drilling on. That are already about half drilled. They're not drilling on that either. So I just keep hearing drill baby drill, but the reality is that um, if we want to get real and move to our greatest strength in our country, it's got to be plug in, baby, plug in. Uh, because for every 16 million all electric vehicles which we deploy in the United States, we back out all the oil that we import from uh, Russia. So that's just the reality. In the next 16 million barrels, I mean, the next 16 million all electric vehicles, we back out the Saudi oil, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why the tax breaks for all electric vehicles, for batteries, are so important. Uh, because we can tell Russia we don't need their oil any more than we need their caviar. We can tell Saudi Arabia we don't need their oil any more than we need their sand. We can do it, but we have to unleash this incredible revolution. And that's all in the legislation. It's still pending. You know, that we take this as our moment, our signal to be able to move to the future. So um, EV is electric vehicle, but it can also stand for avoiding, evading violence. 
you know, getting ourselves into wars around the world, funding uh, despots, yeah. autocracies, uh, where it's completely avoidable because we put 70% of the oil we consume into gasoline tanks, uh, and it's something that we can cure ourselves of, and also reduce greenhouse gases, and also protect consumers from crazy price spikes the way we uh, see right now. So uh, the, Na the National Climate Bank that came out of this committee, that's part of the solution. Uh, so on so many of the other programs that uh, that we have been considering in this committee and are all ready to be passed. Uh, but if we're going to be serious, um, we have to do everything we can to uh, pass those tax breaks, pass the Climate Bank, uh, and send a message to these countries around the world that finally America as a technological giant is going to rise up because right now we have oil companies sitting on 15,000 leases that they're not drilling on because they're saying they're not making enough money. Uh, and that just can't be how we protect American security, the American economy, the environment of our country, uh, and ultimately our moral standing in the world. If we have a capacity to do this, we should unleash that revolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.